and I'm making sure. Danny, dude, thanks for getting and back to me, man. I was I was so stoked to meet you. Okay, uh, I'm I'm to be honest, I'm very excited to meet you. You know, uh, I, I've you've been on the list of people that I've wanted to talk to for a little while, so I'm very happy that we are able uh, to finally make that happen. Yeah, life. So I'm going to let me close this, close this, and this. And I'm giving a second for people to come in. Love it. Uh, the last, the last one we had about thirty or so people. So nice. That's uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah. If I'm doing tech, the numbers get higher. If I'm sure. doing this, it gets a little. Nobody wants more. to hear recruiters. We're like the worst. <laughs> people are so people damn tired honest, of hearing about us. I think I think this is very valuable for a lot of people because obviously you're trying to get a job, and uh, people just don't know what you're really looking for. Right. So I that's why I'm loving this right now is because we can bridge that gap. Hey, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. I see some people are already popping in. That's a good sign. Nice. Let people are more interested. <clears throat> Let me get this last thing. I'm bringing back raising the roof. Bringing back raising the roof. Oh, yeah. you got a lot of work ahead of you, but all right. Yeah, a lot I'll of work let, ahead of me. I let you do that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right. So we've got several profiles here. Um, if you have questions, do not hesitate in um, putting them in the chat. Uh, I will get to them uh, in any way that I can. Yes. Today, I am with Taylor. Taylor is a recruiter extraordinaire. He has helped many people land jobs in tech, and he is fashion savvy as all hell with that shirt. <laughs> I I, but I am very pleased to have you here with me today. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you for taking some time out of your day. I uh, genuinely appreciate that. Absolutely. I hope we can answer all of your questions. And I've got several profiles that I'm going to be going through. And if uh, you want your profile to be viewed, uh, put your LinkedIn profile in the comments and we'll go through it. So I'll ask you a couple questions that I normally ask before we get into that. Yeah. And what are certain things that a candidate can put on their LinkedIn profile that stands out to you? Like what's your like gotcha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been pretty loud about this. Um, and again, Danny, I appreciate Danny having me on. Um, I, I like saw him post this on LinkedIn. I was like, oh, I'm going to slide into his DMs. And then here we are. So, and, and that goes to, I guess, my next thing talking about LinkedIn. And I've been really loud about this. Um, again, if you want to give me a follow on Twitter, at TDS and do a lot of education around the job search. And um, the the first thing is, is I'm really bullish about LinkedIn. So thank you for asking me that question. Did not know you were going to ask me that question. So this <laughs> is perfect. Um, so the first thing is, so this is a little hack um, that I actually have shared last week. Um, and I had a really good interview um, with a National Software School grad about this. So recruiters, when we search on LinkedIn, we actually don't click on your profile unless your title says what you do. And so uh, with, with that being said, um, the title is kind of what's under your picture in LinkedIn, right? And so like if you're an aspiring software developer, like that doesn't get me to click on your, because I don't know, like, what do you want to do? .NET? Do you want to do React? Do you want to do Java? Like give me those specifics, right? Aspiring .NET developer, finishing bootcamp. Right. I think those are extremely important to articulate that in the title because what happens is as us recruiters search and there's like 150 profiles that pop up, like we're not going to go through every single one. So what we do is we scan right. the titles. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing I would say is um, you're, I, I've had some conversations about this. Um, people think it differently. Again, I always want to say I'm only one person. Um, I'm only one recruiter. So don't come out of this and say, well, Taylor says this. So this is what I need to do. Um, but I think the one thing is, is your LinkedIn should be a summary of your resume. So if you're in tech, the, what I would do is every position, I would have three bullet points. First bullet point is talk to me what, about what you do. Like you're talking to a family member. Let's face it. We all talk to our family members differently about what we do. Um, even though my mom thinks I help fix laptops, I do not mom. I help people find, I, or I help find people to fix laptops. So that's the first yeah. thing. Explain to me, right? I'm developing the red notification dot on Facebook when you click the notifications. Like that's what I do. Okay, great. I understand that. Second thing is, is I would list basically a summary of the main applications or projects you've worked on recently, right? So, hey, I'm working on, you know, these two main projects utilizing React and Redux, right? So that's really important. The third thing I would do is, is have a really a, a technologies use summary. So that's front to back technologies um, that you have worked with in your specific position. Um, because what that does is that uh, allows recruiters to um, 
catch on those keywords, right? You have to have enough keywords to get the recruiters attracted to your profile, but then you need not a lot of keywords so the recruiter can understand what you do from a functional level as well. So those are kind of the two kind of, you know, big things I've been preaching the last few weeks on uh, Twitter. That makes perfect sense. Now, let me ask you this. So I'm of the mindset that, um, and you, you could correct me if I'm wrong. I normally tell people drop aspiring. And if you're a developer, put developer, like, but be very specific about what you're looking for yes. because aspiring is not helping you on any keyword searches. No, no one's looking for who's the aspiring developer in Memphis. Yeah. I'm like, not searching not aspiring. Yeah. No. No. So I always say like, if you know how to make website, you're already a developer at that point. Like as soon as you can create an actual website, whether job title or not, you're a developer. So now you need to be listing out the languages that you're spec like you're specializing in. Right. For example, if you're a .NET developer, put .NET developer. Don't put backend developer with nothing specific behind it because yep. you're not going to pop up in anything. So uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a blend. I mean, you kind of have to play the game, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I hate you know the keyword jargon. Listen, I get it, but you have to play the game. In a sense, you have to get people, you have to get people, recruiters attracted to your profile. And the way to do that is obviously to use those keywords. Absolutely. And so, uh, one question that we have, well, yeah. I, I, I pulled up his um, LinkedIn profile, so we'll go ahead and do his LinkedIn. I love it. It's great. Question because uh, we've got se uh, several people in here and we'll probably get some more in a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, share this screen. And we've got several profiles um, pulled up that we're going to go through. I love it. <clears throat> Let me close these messages. By the way, Danny, this is a great idea, man. Again, I mean, props to you and kind of what you're doing. I think this is, this is so cool. Uh, I, I may steal this. So I, I hope that's okay. Go ahead. You know, I, I'm more than, more than married. If people are getting help out of it and to be honest, the goal is, getting people jobs. And Man, that's for it. me, my whole, like the last year and a half has been obsessed with the idea of getting people into the jobs that they want. So but good. now if I have the ability, instead of me doing all the hard work, I can show them exactly what I've been doing this whole time. Then, you know, it's helping people outside of Memphis yep. because my whole focus has always been the city of Memphis. But if I can focus on, you know, people in India and in Sri Lanka and I love we have some people in here from Italy and London. And, you know, we're getting the whole world at this point. Might as well help as many people as we can. Well, and I, and so, I think too, and I'm going to piggyback on you real quick and then we'll get to Will's sure. LinkedIn. I think it's so good with what you're saying, because I think now, especially during COVID times, right? Like I'm going to be totally honest with you, Danny. I don't think I would have met you if it hasn't been for COVID, <clears throat> right? And like, like, like being at home, being more virtual, covering more, more ground. Like I, I have a text message platform. If people want direct job tip advice, shoot me a text 615-235-5650. Again, 615-235-5650. But I created this community through text messaging because there's LinkedIn, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. Like, let me just get the information directly to you. And I have people from Washington text me. I've never met anybody from Washington before, but they've gotten on the platform and we've been able to kind of spitball on how to write a, a resume or LinkedIn. And so again, props to you and kind of what you're doing in the community as well, man. I appreciate that. Uh, I have a question for you. Yep. And um, I'm going to ask every, I'm trying to ask several questions to all the recruiters and hiring managers to yeah. see what's like the most common things. So statistically, there's a statistic out there that says the average hiring manager recruiter spends about six seconds on a resume yep. before they decide whether they want to invest more time in it or to move on to another. Do you think industry-wise that this is a common practice? And do you think this is something that you do as well? Uh, I wouldn't say six seconds, but it's pretty quick. I mean, I, I would say... Um, you know, I've been recruiting overall now for about nine years. I've been recruiting just um, engineers probably for the last six, seven. Um, you know, I ran the numbers the other day. I've met close to 4,000 engineers now um, mm -hmm. during my time. And so, like, I I've gotten to the point where obviously I can, you know, look at a resume pretty quickly. I would say it's pretty fast, though, which is why it's important, right? Will, right? I love what Will has, software engineer. Mern stack, right? To be totally honest with you, I would take away full stack developer and just expound out what Mern is, right? Because I'm yeah. going to be honest with you, recruiters, for the most part, again, I'm one recruiter, we don't search Mern, right? We want to know React, we want to know Node, we want to know Express, we want to know Mongo, right? We're, we're not searching those that Mern wording. So, but again, that, right? Yeah. It's just, it, it's, it, it's, it, it is an eyeball glance. Absolutely. 
Okay. And, and that is why I always say, you know, especially in your LinkedIn and your resumes, you need to give the information, make it so easy that they can access it that now they're interested in discovering more. But if you make it hard and they have to work for it, a lot of times they're going to pass over it, not knowing that you've even listed it there. And right. we had several profiles earlier that we did where they had the information in completely hard to reach places. And we'll see how these resumes are and these LinkedIn's, I mean, are. But now, just looking at Will's uh, first glance, mm -hmm. What do you think about it so far? I'm going to have you rate every profile we go through as well. <laughs> I love it. Putting spot. Well, first off, I think Will, a uh, great headshot, right? Like a yeah. good headshot cannot be overstated, understated. You need to have a good one, right? Like yeah. Danny, yours is solid, man. Yours is consistent, you. right? Yeah, yeah the, that beautiful <laughs> face, right? 10 out of 10, Danny's face. But but like when I saw Danny on, on Twitter and then I connected with Danny on LinkedIn, I was like, oh, same. Like, I know who that is because it's the same picture, right? And so, Will, really good white background, good smile, great facial hair, you know, really, really good, stands out. I, I see nothing wrong with that. And then again, right, going with the software engineer Mernstack, I would just say so software engineer uh, targeting, you know, Mongo Express, React Node opportunities. I agree with that. And just to piggyback on a headshot, you don't need a professional camera. You can literally no, do this with a smartphone. Yep. Just dress up for the part, you know? Is that the way just you want to no show No bathroom people? selfies, man. Yeah. No yeah, bathroom. Yeah. No toothpaste, right? No toothpaste on, on the windows or anything like yeah, that. Pretty much. All right. So overall, minus this, we got a, we got a good it. landing spot. I yep. like it. All right. We're at the about section now. Now, my question with you on about... Are you of the camp where you think it needs to be short and sweet, or do you prefer it to be long and um, detail filled? Yeah. Uh, so I mine is long and detailed filled. I need to fix mine because it drives me nuts. Because I know for a fact I get tired reading of my own. So I would say honestly, we need to shorten this up even more, right? So like, listen, Will, I know you're probably passionate, man. You don't need to tell me that, right? Like. I know you probably have a never ending drive because like you're probably newer in your career, right? Like, again, these are all fluff words. The, the right. thing is, is hacking LinkedIn and getting your, everything needs to be like two or three bullet points. That's it. Right. So if I were the about section, I, you know, depending on where you're at in your career, I'd be like five years of overall uh, software experience, um, two years of angular two plus uh, with a strong emphasis on TypeScript and targeting, UI front end specific roles, right? So the about should have, right? It, it's like writing a paragraph and how they did it in college, right? So you have like, it's like a pyramid, mm -hmm. right? Very broad and then more targeted, right? So your broad should be overall years of experience, outlining how many years of experience you have within the specific technology or technology that you want to pursue. And then what type of role are you targeting? Sure. Uh, how much can a dev put in a LinkedIn title without being too spam? All right, we got a question, and this seems uh, really relevant. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> how much can a dev put in a LinkedIn title without being too spammy, like being a tech lead, full stack dev, Docker professional? I guess that would be a bit much. Would that make sense? Um, I mean, I would say, again, put what's <clears throat> in your title that you want to be called for. Right. So, so, so if you want to get called for, you know, a, a, a tech lead spot, right? Yeah. I'd put that technology lead focusing on DevOps with an emphasis in Docker. That that's exactly the way I would approach that myself. I there thought you were going to say something mind. different and we were about to argue. But no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, know you and I think pretty similarly, man. <laughs> All right. So our advice on the about is to shorten this up a bit, get rid of the filler words. Uh, so now we're in the, hey, Kyle, hey, I got to give a shout out to my buddy, Kyle. He's on here. It's all about that wording. That's right. Kyle. About that word. I do love Kyle. Kyle, oh, uh, we, we go way back just a couple months, but no, Kyle, Kyle is awesome. I love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we talk all the time on Twitter and I probably give him more headaches than it's deserved, but <laughs> you no, know, I appreciate him nonetheless. But, uh, so we're in the featured section. I'm a big believer. Well, let me get your. Do, so he has a list of recommendations here. Do you think um, 
this is an awesome feature section or do you think he can improve? What is your advice or so I, I think this is great, man. Again, Danny, I'm I'm so stoked you're doing this because I think LinkedIn right now is just it's it's where everyone's attention should be. I think Twitter and LinkedIn is, is where it needs it needs to be. Absolutely. And I think a whole other conversation for networking and and I have some other podcasts and, and material if anybody wants to reach out from that perspective. But I think LinkedIn honest, right now I'll is- tell you this on LinkedIn, I didn't use Twitter until about March. So LinkedIn has been my only focus for over a year and a half. And that is literally how I've helped almost 70 people land their jobs. In Dude, tech. it's blown up, man. The power of the networking that you can do on the site is unlike it's, any other. It's so underrated. And, and one thing I'll say is I'm not someone that fills out applications. I, I can honestly tell you I turned down six jobs before I accepted my job in tech. I might have filled out two or three applications. Everything I did was networking with hiring managers and recruiters mm-hmm. and getting myself into interview one. Like yep. I would talk, I would network, I'd sell myself. And my profile obviously gets a lot of attention. But I mean, honestly, like once you build up that network and people are like, as a, especially as a hiring manager, they don't need to see your application. They know what you're about at that point. Yep. And if they're interested, they want to call you in. I'm, so I'm, that is why I like LinkedIn. Man, I'm, I'm not kidding you. One of my buddies who actually moved up to Nashville to, to be in a band with. Um, mm-hmm. So I was a drummer. Um, and... Uh, he messaged me the other day. He's a data scientist up in upstate New York. He messaged me the other day and goes, Hey man, I just got an interview request because of my engagement with a hiring manager on LinkedIn. I was like, it works. I was like, that's it. That's literally it. You're my one case study. I'm going to go retire now because the thing is, is like, like, that's what I've been preaching. Like it, we're all stuck at home right now. What is the one way to network? And it's through LinkedIn being involved in meaningful conversations. So that being said, let me get back to your original question. Yes. So the featured portion. So the featured portion here in my mind should be where your portfolio goes, right? Mm-hmm. So code samples, GitHub, um, a place where I can go and click uh, to something to show your work, right? So for me, your references should be at the bottom of your LinkedIn where there is a reference tab, right? So, so if I was, you know, somebody who is, so if I was recruiting Will, I wouldn't click on this letter of recommendation. I would scroll all the way down to his bottom and look at it. What I would want to see from Will right here is a sample of anything he's done, right? So let's say he's, let's say he's a designer, UI, UX, heavy front end. I want to see what he's done, right? If you're more of a back end, right? I, I still want to see like a project that you've been a part of, even though I can't read code, even though like, but again, I would have your GitHub here somewhere where a manager can click through and get to more of your work. I agree with that. Yeah, you do. Uh, and to be honest, one thing I always say about the featured section, this to me is the most valuable piece of real estate you have on your profile, especially because just like Taylor agrees with me, you've got about six seconds to make an impression. We'll say six to 10 to 15, whatever. It's a very small, finite amount of time that you have to get the attention and hook them. Right. Yep. So why would you waste this very valuable real estate right here on the most blandest thing that you can put? Why not showcase the things that you've achieved, the things that you're making, like in a good way, not, 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 you know, like, Oh, hundred days of code, hundred days of code is not for LinkedIn. Like you're not putting what you're working on because as a, in my opinion, as a manager, hiring manager, if you were to view that, you would say, Oh, he's still a work in progress as opposed to a strong asset that I can bring on my team. Mm-hmm. LinkedIn is a place where you show your strengths, keep your weaknesses for Twitter. Don't put them here. Like keep all your work in progresses. Don't, don't put that here. But uh, another question I want to ask you, um, and how much do you think follower count matters on a platform like that? Not at all. None. I completely agree with you. And the reason why I ask you that oh, is like five for yes. five now between Danny and I. <laughs> we're, we're, we're on the same page. Beep, I already beep. know that we're like, we, we, you know, the same things that I know. And we're this is like, Hey, you do X, Y, Z. This is yeah. going to be how yeah. we get you as close to a job as possible. But I get people all the time saying, well, recruiters or managers, they're not going to pay attention to me because I only have like 20 followers on LinkedIn. Your follower follower account does not equate to your value as an employee and an asset to a company. The two do not mix. The only thing I would say that increases with your follower account is the opportunity to present yourself in front of new people. Because I always say you never know where one conversation will lead you. If you have a thousand followers, there's more potential at that point 
that you can have more single conversations that could lead somewhere as opposed to 100. But outside of that, follower count is completely irrelevant in the grand scheme. And you should definitely showcase all of your work there. Yep. Great. Okay. And we're at the experience section. So what do we think about this? Uh, let's see here. So first off, I think um, I think from a title per- – so here is, here is one thing that I have gone back and forth with um, – with with the title and, and and I'm gonna get into some hot water with this. I know this, and I'm not saying lie on your LinkedIn, never lie, but I still think keywords are incredibly important, right? So here, web project coordinator, like what does that mean? Right. I'm not searching web project coordinators, right? So if I'm looking at this, like one, there's no tech in here. I'm, I'm just reading it right now. There's no tech, right. and like I, I don't really know. Like onboarding clients to commercial and benefits administration platforms by employing fantastic communication and problem solving skills. Like, I don't know. What, what does that mean? Right. Like, like what is like, what does this company do and, and how do you work in with this company? Like y- you wouldn't explain to your parents that you cr- create and implement new internal workflows. And I, I, so just to piggyback on this, I say tailor your job description and job title to universal industry standards. So let's say you're a software engineer, but your company gave you a title of technology engineer extraordinaire. No one knows what the second title means, but if you know that title means you're a software engineer, list that. Or if you're a front end engineer and you're, you know, you're, company gave you like this very unique title make it what the industry standard is because one that's exactly what recruiters are actually looking for Mm -hmm. but two those are the keywords that they're searching for and three i don't work at your company i I, and i'm with you i have no clue what a web project coordinator is yeah so that helps nobody in the situation besides yourself you don't know how many opportunities you could be losing just by having that title and here's another thing too, and I want to I want to harp on this with the service representative for 24 Hour Fitness. So I'm really big. Um, I, I have a junior dev newsletter um, that I send out every month. Um, you know, I, I've I've spoken at National Software School, uh, you know, a lot of times, and and I'm really passionate about helping junior developers find their first job. And unfortunately, because of who, uh, because we're a staffing company, and most hiring managers don't pay staffing companies to find junior talent because there's so much of it out there. I can't help junior developers. And so I really try to give back as much as humanly possible. All that being said, I talk about this a lot. Even in a non-coding gig, I need comparisons and I need quantitative information, right? So for 24-Hour Fitness, let's say that you had a record month and assigned 30 new, 30 new, 30 new members in one month. And the average is 10. For me, that's pretty cool. Right. Because like for me, if I'm looking at your information, I'm like, dang, well, I know that has nothing to do with coding, but he's got some pretty good people skills. If he's able to sign three X the amount of members than usual. But again, it's it, it's comparative. Right. Like if you tell me I grew the company to five million dollars in revenue. Okay, well, what were you at? Four and a half. Yeah. Right. It's like you have to give me some comparative stuff. But even with non technical positions, give me one or two bullet points about what you did, but be quantitative and show people skills. Right. Let's be honest, Danny, as a hiring manager, like you want people who are chill, who know how to work with people. Right. And you can figure that out if Will here says, I broke the record in the amount of members I signed for the month of February in 2019. Absolutely. Uh, what, one thing I always say about that is, your job description is not where you actually write what you did, but what you actually achieved. I love so, that. For example, what we did with one previous profile with Daniel, he was a waiter at Piccadilly. Well, he had nothing written there, but in in the big description that he had written, it was like half a page long. One of the things that he had written was he had uh, an, an award for uh, customer service. Well, to me, that means he's customer focused. Yep. He's focused on delivering the end product. These are things that you need to be listening because as a, an employer, they're going to love reading that, that your customer focus because obviously money is only coming from one place. Customers, it's not coming from anywhere else. So exactly. if you focus on the customer, you're focused on the end product. So, th- I mean, even as a 24-hour fitness, I worked at a, 
uh, French Riviera Spa. I don't know if they have that out there. It's a, it's all out of business now though. But and it's not out of business because I left. Right. It was rocking when I was there. But uh, you know, for me, I used to always say, you know, I'd go door to door selling memberships, even though I didn't have to, and that was how I made you know a ton of money. But uh, for you need to list something that someone's gonna because even if you have the lowest position of low, you did something to maintain that job, and I'm sure you did something slightly outside of what was expected of you. All you got to do is list that. That's it. All right. So we've got this part done. Now we have the education. So UC Davis continuing professional education, sir, the Santa Rose junior college. I mean, here's the deal. I mean, listen, we have clients that education's big, but for the most part, it's not big. I mean, this is, this is a whole, I mean, this is a whole nother yeah. session that you and I could chop on, but I, I just, the education, it is what it is. If you have it, great. If you don't, not a big deal, just put it, um, um, you know, I, I would say this may be another thing you put the, in the about section, right? If you have a BS and, and CS or an MS and CS, right? That's where you put it in the about section, but I don't really look at education. Yeah. And so now what's your opinion on certs? So it's, it's so funny. I've had so many conversations about certs lately. I don't think certs matter unless you're in the cloud. Um, certs are kind of a dying breed that I'm seeing, right? No one goes and gets their Microsoft developer certification anymore just because there's so many developers now. I think if you're going to spend how many hundreds or thousands of dollars, just save your money and go take on free work to put it in your portfolio. Um, you know, people are like, oh, don't take on free work. Listen, I tweeted that a while back and it went crazy. I get it, right? There's both sides of the story and I totally understand that. If you're at a position where you can spend money on a cert, you're at a position where you can take on free work. Here, here's my whole thing with certs and it, it's slightly on the same point as you. It can't hurt. Sure. It might not sure. Hurt. Yeah. I mean, it's it, sure. it's literally like prayer, right? It can't love hurt. that. It love can't that. hurt. Love to that. pray and it can't hurt to throw in a cert. And I mean, either they skip over or they look at it and say, oh, he's, he did something or she did something. Yeah. I would say the only cert that really may weigh in is if you've got like a top, top, top level cert. It may make someone pause for a second. Cloud certs are big that. that I'm seeing. Yeah. So, the, so there's, cloud or, yeah. for example, Oracle, I would say, that, uh, you know, something like that. Otherwise... I don't think it's worth. I would never pay for a cert personally, right. like or especially like a YouTube cert or like a Udemy cert. Like I've got a couple Udemy certs on mine just to fill out the section. But honestly, it, I know no one's like, oh, he took a Udemy course. This guy, <laughs> we this guy knows this guy. something. Yeah. No, no. But the only thing where I see traction because there's not enough saturation yet is the cloud certs because I, I think they're. There's not enough engineers out there that are totally proficient. They just kind of use it because they're they've been in the environment. They really haven't dug into it. So you know, if you can bring the Azure certs, especially Azure, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of AWS fatigue right now, just just in the market. You know, I, I think I think if you want to pursue, especially if you're more on the database engineering side of things, um, I, I think everything's moving to the cloud. I would look at that. It, it's not a waste of money for cloud certs. Um, just my two cents on there on that side of things. Okay. And skills and endorsements. Now, from your side, how important is this? Nah, I mean, I eyeball it to see, like, like if I don't know you, I eyeball it um, to see w maybe where your focus is. But, um, but here, here's another thing too, right? If you have over a hundred endorsements on Node, I probably know you're pretty good at Node. Yeah. So or I mean, have a lot I mean, of yeah, I mean, I mean, or have a lot of friends. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but for the most part, no, I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, so what about like recommendations? Does that matter at all as well? Yes. So the recommendations is huge, right? So, so that's what I was saying. I think recommendations is incredibly important. It's an incredible, it's not talked about enough. I think you have to have recommendations, at least one, the more, the better. If I go to a developer's profile that I don't know, and you have five, 10, 15 recommendations on LinkedIn, like quite frankly, I hope my mom's not watching, but like you're the shit. I mean, to be totally honest with you, like especially because not many people have it, that if you have a ton of recommendations, I'm like, ah, this guy or girl gets it. Okay. And what do you feel about the interest section? Do you actually go through that or- no. Okay, see, that's the way I felt. The last hiring manager is like, I actually looked through the interest. Interesting, to see, okay. Uh, one thing that she looks for is 
are you actually following companies that are relevant? Huh. And are you even following the company I'm hiring for? Because if you are, you just got yourself extra points without realizing. I guess I should take off my um, Fortran follower then. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're done with this profile. Yeah. So well, so hey, man, great, pro- great profile, man. Seriously, I, I think there's some tweaks, but I think uh, I, I think you're crushing it. All right. So on a scale of one to ten, where are we rating? Ah, I don't do this, man. I think a seven. I guess seven. Uh, well, here's the other thing too: is people have asked us to be brutally honest because this is very valuable feedback for them, and they're not going to get it anywhere else. So it's a seven. We got a slight room for improvement, but mm-hmm. I think we're. I agree with you. I think we're on the ball. I would just add. I would shorten this up a little bit. I love this though. I just uh, want to know what the, you do. I, I, but yeah. see, I see, man, Danny's. I argue with you. Like, what is that? Is that what you're working on? Is that what you want to work on? Like, well, what are those? What so are those I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't have it exactly like this. I would have it written out in actual conversation. Yes. But I feel like this is, he's written everything to match a keyword. But I would write out, like, in my current job, I do uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and Java. And in my previous job, I did Ajax, whatever, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't write it out exactly like this. But now I will say in my resume, uh, and we could do a whole thing on that too. But <laughs> there's I, so much. To just there's yeah. just, so much. To I, so I hate the uh, like you know the summary that people have in the resumes. I don't like the summary. So what I have done, and you could be, I could be wrong on this, but I've listed every language that I know, and like that I work in and I'm proficient in. And for me, I felt like this has helped me pass ATS software a lot more than uh, traditional applications. That works. That's where my and 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 I'll share my um, resume template for you uh, to you, Danny, after this call. Um, but I think um, uh, I, I, that's where my last bullet point of every position you put a technologies used, and that technologies used category is your full tech stack from front to back, and that usually gets you through the ATS. All right. So we're. That's good to know because some people are like, oh, don't do that. And some people are like, that's pretty you have damn to. genius. You have to. You yeah. got you to play the game. All right. So here we have Todd Appleby. He's from Australia. Nice, uh, Todd. I, I want to make it down to Australia. I went to New Zealand last year. I need to go to Australia. All right. So uh, no banner. This is the generic render from LinkedIn. Um, just looking at the uh, – he works at HP. So uh, working, looking at this. And the only reason why I know this, I spoke to him the other day. Nice. But, uh, just looking at this, first impressions, what do we think? Uh, I, I'd like a little better picture um, and, and something where you're smiling. I, I think right. you're a good looking dude, man. Like let's let, let's show those pearly whites and and let's make, you know, a little bit more warming, a little warm, yeah. um, you know, because it, it, it's a dark, moody. Again, I'm just picking. I mean, you can leave that picture and it'll be totally fine. I'm just, you know, pro- providing some feedback. Yeah, I would at the very least at least center it. Yeah, at least center. But I get it, man. You want to be artistic. You want to have that like yeah. left third. I, I I get that. I, I get it. See, for, for me, for and he, here's, he, yeah, exactly. This is LinkedIn is not social media. LinkedIn is how do I make connections and network with people that brings value to the conversation? You never know where one conversation can lead to a six figure job. Mm-hmm. So why would you want to play with that money trying to be artsy or unique? Yeah. I, I, I think it's just not made for this platform. I wouldn't do that personally. Yeah. All right. So we have his about section, system administrator, IT engineering, data center, maintenance. Yeah. What do we think? Um, I like it. Um, I, I think I need more keywords, right? Systems, you like Windows, you Linux, um, like what flavor of Linux, what type of engineering, DevOps, right? Data center, give me some more. I don't know enough about data center keywords, LAN, WAN, yeah. rack. I don't know. Um, wireless network installation. I don't, I'm, 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 I don't search wireless network. I search tools and technologies, right? So right here, you know, again, uh, 15 plus years of overall systems administration focused on Linux with an emphasis in Windows. IT engineering focused on Python and Ruby for scripting um, with an emphasis in AWS cloud architecture. Data center installation with, I don't know any keywords with data center stuff. Um, and then wireless network installation experience with blah, blah, blah. Yeah, personally, I would just make this another two lines or so and just 
write it out. Like you're you're not helping yourself here. You're shooting yourself in the foot for no reason. I would just add a little bit and make it common speech, like I did X Y Z. Basically, what you were saying, just add a little bit. It doesn't need to be long. Nope. Just small and brief. And yep. My my opinion is your about section should read in 15 seconds. I love Simple that. Thing. All right, so we're at experience. So these are obviously he has a ton of experience, but uh, no description of the job titles. What do you think? Um. Yeah. So definitely want. Um, you know, technical solutions consultant. I need some buzzwords, right? I'm not. I'm. I'm not searching technical solutions, and for for like, like I'm not searching that, right? So what? What is that? Is it a? Is it a .NET architect? Is it? Is it a data center architect? Is it a Linux architect? Is it? What is that? Um, I think I need a summary, right? I, again, three bullet points. Tell me what you do. When I look at this, I'm like, okay, this guy has it's more on the system side. I, I don't know what a technical solutions consultant is. Uh, I'll message him. See, I, and I just come up with another point. A lot of people get mad at recruiters for messaging them about positions that don't make sense. That's probably because your profile doesn't help us. Right. Right. Hey, man, I, you know, listen, I, I you know, I, I see you do some like COBOL stuff or no, or hey, I, do you do COBOL? Because, because in that recruiter's mind, systems may mean COBOL. Yeah, and it's like, no, dude, I don't do COBOL. Why'd you message me? Well, I don't know, because you just have systems. I didn't know what else you do. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, yeah, you he do. has a lot of experience. So then yeah, he does have a lot of experience. Have... I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 not feel bad because right. I told him pretty much the same thing that we're discussing now. You've given no information on what you do. So if I'm if I find you, keyword is if, if I find you because you're not matching any of the keywords I'm looking for. So if I find you, right, I'm gonna look at your experience saying, Well, at least I know he knows something. Right. So now I can hit him with a general uh request to have a conversation. I don't know where that conversation is gonna go, but at least it'll give me the opportunity to dig in more because it's not like he has a resume here either. It's just this. Right. So obviously, when you go here, it just technical officer help desk that it's just very general terms but at least i can reach out to them and say well can we further go through this right so yeah, here's yeah. education uh insert from vm uh and licenses i mean listen I, I like that right but honestly i would put your licenses insert in the about section yeah right i'm uh, vm especially when it's something like this yeah i'm vmware vsphere certified right because because if we find Hey, listen, Taylor, I need a VM VMware engineer with that vSphere cert. Right? Like like I need I need I need to see that at the top of your profile. Yeah. All right. Endorsements, accomplishments, history courses, and interest. All right. So overall, what are we thinking? Overall, I mean, here's a deal, right? I, I would still say seven out of ten. I, I I think honestly, maybe even six out of ten, because there's just no information around what, what you do. Like I literally yeah. don't know what you do. I, I I don't, and that's not yeah. good. Yeah, don't don't hesitate to be brutally honest because they can take that however they want. Sure, but the constructive criticism instead of sugarcoating it will help a lot of the people because we've got some we got some profiles coming up. But you know, six uh, out of ten, I, I, six out of ten. <laughs> I chose some for sure. All right, All right. thank you, Todd. I appreciate you being a part. Yeah, of thank this. you, Todd. Don't hate me. I love you. All right, we've got Daniel. He's from Ghana. Nice, uh, Daniel. Same Daniel. thing. Uh, genetic background from LinkedIn. He listed himself as self-employed. Uh, so what do we think off of here? So first off, I can't see his face. Right. Right. It's a whole body. Listen, man, great suit, great tie. Your tie is hitting you perfectly on the belt. Props to you on that. That's very important, yes. but I can't see your face. So, I, yeah. so let's, I love the photo. I just wish it was zoomed in more. Same, same again, solid suit, solid tie. I need to see your face. All right. And so now we'll go down here and it's straight into his experience. Uh, so here is, so I'm really glad you picked this profile, Danny, because I don't yeah. think, oh, say first off, so the title aspiring front end web developer, one, take out aspiring Two, right. what tech are you trying to go after? You going after angular, you going after react view ember. What are you going after? Like put that up there. Um, so do that. Uh, I think, so the self-employed, so this is a fascinating thing, Andy, and I'm glad you picked this profile because not many individuals know how to notate their self-employment, right? And so here, what I would do, I'm fine with you self-employed. Honestly, hate to say it, I would just call yourself a consultant, 
right? I don't know what it is. I think it's just it's it's just my brain and how it works. And I know it's a lot of other people's brains too. It's a consultant, IT consultant sounds better than self-employed. Self-employed sounds like, hey, uh, you know, I've been like not really working. I just call myself self-employed. To a consultant means you're actually doing work. Right. And so I would put well, consult. Go ahead. I agree with that, except his description. I'm a newbie in front end web dev. Right. So, but my thing is, 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 is he working on any projects right now? That's my theory of no. And okay. again, this is all we have to go off of. Makes so sense. My impression was he's not working or doing anything in web dev. He's learning right now. And so he put himself as a self-employed uh, developer to get some experience going. Yeah. I So for me here so so that's the case then i would then okay so then then self-employed apprenticeship works um what i would do is i would try to list any side project you have going on and if you don't have any side projects start asking right i think a lot of people are like where do i start i don't know anybody i say open up your phone book but it's not your phone book like open up your contacts i mean, i haven't even picked up a phone book forever but uh, open up the contacts on your phone and just scroll through right like hey so and so works for a church. Uh, hey, do you like church? Always needs free help. Always, and it's like hit them up, or you need to hit up like a local YMCA or something like that. Like somebody needs a payment Shopify portal set up, right? Volunteer your time and put that on your LinkedIn ASAP. I agree with that. Uh, so, and then we have his interest. So That's- we're lacking a lot. Yeah, I would I would say probably like four out of ten. Um, you know, four four yeah, four out of ten. I I think you need to have more meat in kind of your your self employed right. I mean, you've been doing that for a year. Like, what what have you been doing the last year? I need to know that. Any anybody needs to know that. Um, take out the aspiring, get a better LinkedIn picture, get a reference, right? Get a recommendation. Um, and, uh, you know, again, throw up a link to your GitHub or personal project, right? If you're an aspiring front end web developer, I need to see some front end UI websites. Yeah. For me personally, the only uh, one thing I would say, uh, put up some content. Uh, yes. let me ask you this, cause this is a, co- a good question that we just got. Cause I was about to go on something. I said, I don't know your opinion on this. How good is it to put out content on LinkedIn? Oh, like, here we go. Uh, you go ahead first, and I'll no, give you my go first because you're the king okay. at this. I, I really feel like I really feel like I, I'm in the presence of a king right now in regards <laughs> to content, and so I oh, feel man. like you need to answer this question first. My opinion is, you need to put out content for several reasons. One, that is going to help you get found by several people, especially if you're showing things that you've achieved, things that you're strong things that you are like, for example, if you say like, oh, I just finished this website and react. Well, if a recruiter sees that, they know you've actually done something in react. And now that gears them to check out your profile, even if you weren't on their list or on their radar, that for me has been very strong. And I also am a very firm believer in, I'm a big believer in this. You To hook somebody, you need to give them something to be hooked by. And here's a great example I'll give you. Haven't you ever wanted to check out a new restaurant? And you're like, well, what are the reviews on this place? Is this even good? Or is this a hole in a wall? And you find out they have a Facebook page, right? And there's no likes. There's nothing on these photos. But they're posting pictures of their food. So now you know as you scroll, oh, well, they got this dish. They got this dish. Well, I don't really like lobster. Oh, well, they got steak. Oh, they know there's no engagement on these posts but they know someone someday somewhere is going to see it and I need to give them enough meat and potatoes to want to be interested in Danny, finding out Danny's more making about me hungry. I need to go eat now. We're going to cut this short. I'm going to go find some lobster rolls Look, and some steak. <laughs> well, you know, I, I ain't get fat by accident. I, I know how to put some weight on stop, somebody. Stop. <laughs> but honestly, that's my belief on content. You need to have enough that if an, a recruiter or a hiring manager finds your profile, they look through a couple of posts and see things that you've done. So yeah. for example, on me, uh, for example, the last manager, she's only known me for five days. In that five days, just casually scrolling through my profile, she's found out I speak at prisons, that I've helped almost 70 people land jobs in tech, that I've spoken at Google, things like that, and just a couple of posts. And she's now realized, okay, I need to know this person. 
Now, I'm not saying everyone's going to have something like that where they can say, oh, I spoke at a prison or I spoke at whatever, but they can have like, oh, I spearheaded a project at work or I helped this initiative ha- you know, make uh, yeah, yeah. sense or I helped bring these customers on board. Whatever achievement it is, post it. Yep. LinkedIn is a place, think about it as if you're trying to make a dating profile, but it's for a job. Like what can I show the best style of myself to get that person to be interested in? So good. Yeah, I, I think... I think many reasons. One, and and if you guys want to check out, I have my own podcast, Guidance Counselor 2.0, and I have another podcast with two of my buddies from Raleigh and Tampa, uh, Unicorn, the Unicorn Finders, um, and we actually we actually gave a presentation on personal brand um, at Vaco's global conference um, back in October when we used to travel. Those were the days, and. Um, and I'm really passionate about, and people are like, oh, personal brand, I hear it, right? Personal brand is just your reputation, right? What is your reputation and what are you putting out on the market? And for me, like, this is the very first time I've ever met Danny, but I knew Danny was an incredible individual who is big on positivity and helping others. And the only way I knew that is because the content he's put out. And then lo and behold, we're 45 minutes into this and we're gelling. And the reason for it, at least I hope we're gelling, but, and, and there, but the reason for that is because I knew because of his, of his content. So you absolutely need to be putting out content. And, and I, I talk about this to National Software School. For me, I put out a post about hacking LinkedIn. I think every job seeker should do their first interview on video and put it on LinkedIn. Because here's the deal. Job interviews, the first interview is like, tell me who you are. Tell me about yourself. Tell me favorite hobbies. Tell me your most successful time. Tell me about a time you've been in turmoil or conflict and how'd you figure it out? What are you working on now? I think you should do a mock interview with yourself, with your camera, selfie style, 20, 15, 20 minutes, post it on LinkedIn and just do that once a month, the same video once a month. Because I will tell you this, the organic reach on LinkedIn, if Danny, so if I like one of Danny's posts, my 5,000 followers see Danny's post. All five, well, 5,000 of the ones that are on LinkedIn at the time. Yeah. Right, people don't understand that. So you're you're able to cover so much more ground as a job seeker because more people are seeing your information. So I I couldn't be more passionate about putting content out on LinkedIn. I, I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the same page. Uh, and, and here's the other thing too: it doesn't cost anything. Like uh, yeah, it literally costs you nothing. It's free. Why not do it? Like it's free. The only, and a lot of people get caught up in what well, people aren't liking it. People aren't viewing it. Sure. Put it out there. When I, when I created my LinkedIn profile, I literally worked at a gas station. And no way. I said, yeah. So my background, in case you don't know it, and for the viewers, I was a professional chicken fryer. Like I fried chicken in gas stations. And no I went to, way. Yeah, I did that for 10 years. And so I went to a meetup and uh, I asked the same question everybody asked at a meetup. How do you get the first job in tech? And yeah. I had the exact same answer over and over again, like a broken record. Oh, man. That it's so job, hard. <laughs> it's so hard. But if you get the first job, every job after that it's easy. be so easy. I thought that was the worst answer someone could tell me because not only did you demotivate and demoralize me, you've given me zero action items to work on. But so then I good. quickly realized everybody else at the meetup heard the exact same answer. No one knew how to break in. And I realized, okay, I'm a loud mouth person. I'm willing to go talk as much as I need to in order to build this network of hiring managers and recruiters. So I literally started cold messaging, cold emailing, and cold uh, talking to people that never met me before. And at that time, they're like, who is this Danny guy? And now they're like, oh, I knew Danny from the beginning. But you know, now I've given them a reason to know me, whereas before I was reaching out. And this leads me to uh, a question right now that we're going to ask. I'm going to reword this question, though. But do you, I'm a big believer in I don't like filling out applications. And the, before I turned, got accepted my job in tech, I turned down six jobs and I've helped countless people. I'm not really big on applications. Mm-hmm. I truly believe one conversation can lead you anywhere, right? So I'm a big believer in network, network, network. How do you feel about that? Do you think someone needs to spend all their time doing applications or do you think networking can be the right? I'll tell you what, man, it just, just kindred spirits. I'm so glad we connected. I'm, I'm big on this. I think you should stop what you're doing now. Stop and stop what you're doing now. Listen to us. And then after you listen to us, stop submitting your resume to job postings, period. And here, and people are like, oh crap, 
well, then what do I do? A few things. First off, really leverage recruiters, right? You need to be in interviewing recruiters like you interview for jobs. Find yourself three to four of us. And again, I have these videos on YouTube. You can check them out. We'll get, get more detailed. But basically, interview recruiters like you interview clients. After that, let them go to work for you. Then what you do is if you see a company that has a job posting up, let's say Acme Widget Company. Acme Widget Company has a job up for a junior developer. Immediately go into LinkedIn, go to the search bar, type in Acme Widget Company, press enter. There's going to be, let's say, 300 people pop up. Go to the search feature. It's very simple. Go to search feature on LinkedIn for the specific city you're in. So Nashville for me. Um, Danny, next time, whenever we can travel, now I'm coming to Memphis. We're hanging out. But um, but, but, but basically, um, search it, search the people, and start DMing people at the company, Acme Widget Company, every developer. Hey, so-and-so, I saw you have a job posting up. Like, who do I need to talk to? Well, actually, Daryl is actually the hiring manager. I, I, I'm actually on his team. How about just go ahead and introduce y'all? Okay, that'd be great. Hey, Daryl, introduction's done. You have a phone call, boom. And he'll now he may say, hey, I need you to submit your resume. That's fine. Sometimes, right? And this is one of the things I break down on my podcast, Unicorn Finders. But you know, sometimes you, you have to go through the process. Sometimes companies have VMSs or ATSs, applicant tracking systems or vendor management systems in place. So you have to play the game a little bit, but try to always make human connection. I and the thing about that, like, oh God. I, I can talk all day about this. I know, same. And, well, and, that's what I and, do. But th- it's so true. And what's funny is, you know, I posted about this the other day on Twitter, and I had so many people saying, oh, don't message a hiring manager. D- don't message a recruiter. What are you talking about? But I think what's important is your opening message shouldn't be, hey, how you doing? Because nobody's replying to that. You need to go in with a specific purpose and outline it. And one thing I do, like, for example, I like knowing hiring managers because maybe I'm not looking for a job with them today, but I want to leave that door open and I want a network. So when I look for a job, I'm not depending on one person, I'm reaching out to 150. Yep. So for me, I started messaging hiring managers and I'm like, oh, I'm big on volunteering. I see that you also volunteered at the mission down in uh, downtown Memphis for the homeless shelter. What did you think about your experience there? I haven't volunteered at that particular place. Do you think that place is better than this? I've given them a question. They're going to reply. They realize that we're like-minded and that we're enjoying the same thing. So outside of professionalism, maybe this is a chance for us to bring our power together and work at the same place as a volunteer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I th- don't be creepy, right? Yeah. Like don't hey, like the, I get a lot of hey's. Yeah, hey, I don't know. Hey, that's weird, right? So, like, hey, like, look at their interests. Hey, I, you know, I see, I, I see you went to the University of South Carolina, right? So did I. Like, how about the Gamecocks this year, right? I can talk Gamecock football for an entire afternoon. And so, but it's like, find something on their profile that connects you with them and start the conversation there. And then we started talking about my other podcast about like, having empathy in the job search, right? Like if you get rejected and the hiring manager goes, Hey, listen, like uh, you're, you're not a fit. Hey, you know what? Thank you for speaking with me. I really, really appreciate it. Right. Because I will tell you this, a lot of times in this market, usually people's first choices go somewhere else. And so if you're their second choice and you don't burn the place down after you get rejected, you're, you're going to get a pretty good look next time. All right, let's jump on the Raul. Yeah, yeah, we got a couple sure. profiles because you know I got a hard stop, and I got a. For those of you that are following, if you want to jump into a meetup after this, I'm doing a meetup in New York uh, with a group of people. Uh, so we got Raul here. We got Web UI UX designer. Uh, this is the first look. What do we think about this? Um, think twice, code once. Love that. I mean, sure, right? I'm, I'm all about some motivation headline stuff. Uh, great profile pick. Very suave. Love the haircut. I wish I could pull that yeah. off. My, my hair is too thin. Great head of hair. Props <laughs> to you. Um, you know, web UI UX designer, JavaScript programmer. Uh, yeah, like it. Um, you know, I what what type of JavaScript, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a lowly recruiter, but I also know there's many, you know, different frameworks within the JavaScript ecosystem. So, you know, are, are you working on view? I mean, what are you working on right now? But overall, I dig it. I dig it. All right. Here's the about section. I can zoom in some more. 
Oh, you're fine. I have my contacts in. I usually wear glasses. Uh, and so like they're a little dry right now. So I apologize to everybody. Mm-hmm. I feel like a crazy person. Um, Second year information management. I'm not going to read all that. No, you're good. I got it. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. I mean, uh, I I like it. I know exactly where he's at, right? He's a second year information management person. He's been doing UI UX design. I dig it. Specialties, Jamstack. You know, I like it. I I think this is a decent about section. Again, if you have any projects, this is where I would want to see it, right? Like, Like, again, if you're anything front end UI UX, your profile needs to be littered with either examples or portfolios or testimonies. Hey, you know, so-and-so came in and yeah, yeah, so-and-so came in and redid my, uh, you know, UI UX and increased click through by a thousand percent. All right. Featured. It's no it. I don't know why that's there. Yeah. I would fix that ASAP. I would, I would featured. This is where I would have portfolios or any sort of uh, project experience there. Yeah. Again, this is the most valuable piece of real estate in your estate. profile. Yep. Uh, education, he's currently in college for his bachelor's, it looks like. Or he graduated and no, like maybe he, graduated. he started in 2080. They started or he graduated. See, I think that means he graduated. Right, we need wow. we need information there because we don't know if you're still in school or exactly. graduated. Yeah. So I would definitely ampl- go on that a little bit. Uh, so he has education, but he has no job experience, it looks like. Or if he does, he hasn't listed anything. Right. I mean, I would I would still say, so again, the way I'm grading this, right, 10 out of 10, absolutely call. 5 out of 10, I'm probably going to pass on you. Anything north of 5 out of 10, I'm probably going to call you. This guy's probably 5 out of 10. I'm probably not going to call you. Um, I don't have enough information. Yeah. I don't have time to message you and try to get all this information from you. Yeah. There's not, there's literally not enough information to make any determination. Nope. Uh, so, Raul, I hope uh, – thank you for being a part of this, and I hope this is constructive criticism to help you out with this. Yes. All right. So I'm going to throw my profile into this. Oh, no, you're not. No, you're not. So uh, I did this same for the last video. Uh, It's basically because uh, I think, in my opinion, that this is a pretty good profile. It gets a lot of traction. And so, you know, if and I love feedback. So if there's things I could work on, I definitely want to work on it. Yeah. yeah. So now to give you information, I had to remove uh, this used to have my phone number on there. I had to remove that because people the internet and I had to remove my company information because the internet people were literally contacting my company and saying, yeah, I know Danny, uh, let me get a job there. And no uh, way. Yeah. It, it's the internet, Mr. you know, that comes with te- uh, Twitter. Well, I mean, it's Twitter, man. You know, know. People sure, well, they get bored, yep. but, uh, that's not a challenge by the way. Please don't go out there trying to find out where I work. Okay? No. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, First impressions off of this. What do we think? What do yeah, we I mean, like again, like? yeah, I, I like, I, you know, I love the header, right? I know Canva is kind of a, an app that that's gaining some traction. I didn't know about it until recently. I'm kind of late to that train, but um, cool. yeah, I mean, so I love, so right. So right now, if I, so I didn't know Danny started, you know, b- before four o'clock central today and I knew he was in Memphis. I knew that he was really active because in the community, Memphis chapter founder, um, I don't know what GDG means. I, I don't know if there's a way to expound on that and or just summarize well, it that. It would be Google Developers Group, but that's so long, it would take up all the real estate. That makes and, sense. But if you just Google GDG Memphis, we're the first thing that pops up. Okay, so that's kind of why I have it like that. Okay. Um, and then, you know, it has his website. Love that. Email to contact him. Literally, first initial. And, and then again, right? I love this. You know, my thing is software engineer. Like, uh, Danny, I, I would love, like, what, what are you programming the most? .NET, Java? Yeah. Uh, so I'm a Java developer. So it re- it said software engineer, uh, Java developer at this company. But once I removed that title, I just kind of just removed everything. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, it's fine. Again, you're not yeah, actively Once I start looking. looking for a job again, I'll fix Correct. that. Correct. 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 All right, so we got that. Now my about section, uh, experience founder with demonstrate oh, sure working, uh, skilled in uh, negotiation. Honestly, man, design job. honestly, if I were you, I would put like have helped seventy people get jobs. Um, you know, really active in local chapter stuff with Google Dev. Maybe this is where you expound on what GDG means. Um, you know, really kind of hit some high points that are very attractive to. You know, because again, I'm sure you're wanting to speak as well. 
um, with all these right. events all over the world, right? So I mean, you know, again, I mean, you know, we all submit our we all submit our profiles to Paper Call or whatever, right? So right. again, this is where I would have it, right? I've sp- spoken at Google, um, part of the Google Dev, you know, community in Memphis. Um, I've helped over seventy people get jobs over the last year. Like that's where I would probably put some of that good, juicy information right there. See, that's what I do with my featured section. So look at that. Look at that. It is when I was a speaker at Google uh, and I was speaking to their employees. This is when I spoke at a prison. Then I have this post where I, I'm a big morning person. I hate mornings. I really hate them, but I know what I can achieve by waking up in the morning. So I wake up at 4 a.m. daily, not because I like to or because it's cool, but that's my time. Because my house it. sleeps until 7. So from 4 a.m. to 7, that is a time where I work on myself. I'm a big believer in to be successful in life, work at your job, but work harder on yourself. Mm-mm. Because your job is giving so you a good. specific task to do something. Whereas when you work on yourself, that's when you're building your value. Because a job can tell me what they're going to pay me, but they don't tell me what I'm worth. So for me, I I believe in quantifying and building my worth and the time that I allocate to myself. I love that. uh, That's why I do that. Then I have this where I've been able to talk, then my stupid dance thing that people like, uh, I did there. I put that there as well. But uh, for the most part, this is what you see. uh, And I feel like that's the valuable reason. Yeah. And I believe this is my what I call quote unquote convert in section. Because once you see this, I've already piqued your interest of like, all right, he spoke at a prison. He spoke at Google. What's going on here? I love it. Uh, I love it. And then um, we got the, I end up in 515 searches. Look at them views, man. Day. Look at them views. That's what I'm talking about <laughs> I, right there. I get the, well, that's why I say this because I know like it's bringing. I think people need to this talk about that. I'm going to look at mine. I'm going to feel very insecure here. Hold on. I don't show that to be braggadocious. We just went over it. I'm sorry. Danny's, Danny's, Danny's like 3X me. So there's that. That makes me feel great. All right. Good job, Danny. Okay. Uh, uh, and then here, yeah, I mean, obviously you're trying to keep your company private. I mean, again, right, I'd yeah. probably say I would want to see, you know, what's your company doing at a high level? What are you doing at a high level? What tech are you using, et cetera, et cetera. But again, they're trying to keep that locked down. Yeah. Um, so for me, what I did here, uh, and this is why I kind of mentioned this to people, I had no experience in tech and I was coming from gas stations. I would show up to job interviews smelling like chicken. I needed to give them a reason to consider me. So what I did was I volunteered at a meetup group and I used that experience of that volunteering with that meetup group uh, here. So the first meetup group I worked with was called Code Connector and I was a leader. So I put that there to be at least to show them something yeah. that I'm passionate about tech and I'm interested, I'm actively working towards it. Uh, and I'm a big person that believes in volunteering. So this kind of lined up with that. And then I show that. So that was my goal to kind of um, get them interested in what I was doing. What are your thoughts on this? Is that a good idea it. or a bad idea? I love it. Okay. Looks good. And so then uh, we'll go down here. So I got my certs and then I've got, you know, where I worked at, a, uh, not worked, but volunteered at a, a food mission. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Law fit, all that good stuff. And the reason why I'm very big on volunteering is number one, you're helping your community. 100%. Why wouldn't you want to? Number two, you're networking when you're there because people that volunteer, they're not all like homeless people aren't volunteering for homeless people. People with jobs are volunteering to help homeless people. Yep. So if they've got jobs, you're networking with other people that are doing that. But number three, if you volunteer, that's on your resume for 20 years. Like it doesn't matter. Right. So why don't you volunteer for a couple, you know, weeks and then throw it on the resume? So you're helping literally three sections of people. You're helping the people you volunteer with, you're helping your community, you're helping yourself. Like there's nothing you could do in this universe that will help everyone and make you look good at the same time. So dangerous um, been true. And then I have my endorsements, I have my recommendations. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. You got the languages as an interest. So overall, what are we thinking? I listen. I'd call you. I I'd say I'd say That's ten it. out of ten, nine out of ten. That works. All right. Uh, we've got a couple people. Uh, I was about to say, what, what, Dan, do don't, do? don't you don't you need to go? We can do this again. Well, I, we've we've only got two more profiles. Okay. I want to jump right. on real fast. All right. So let's do uh, it. We got this one real fast. Okay. So this is Nabil Parker, uh, freelance Flutter developer from India. What are we thinking? Uh, 
Nabil, um, let's let's get a little bit more of a professional headshot. Looks like you kind of just woke up, maybe. Um, either that, or you got great hair. And the right? towel hanging. If you can pull that, yeah, the towel hanging. Yeah, so let's, let's get a professional picture. Selfie it up again. Don't have to be super nice, but just not maybe in a bathroom or wherever you're at. Um, freelance Flutter developer. I like that you have the keyword Flutter. I know that's a thing. I would also add mobile, right? Because you want to encompass more. Because I know people are are open to calling people who don't have Flutter for mobile gigs who want to get into Flutter, right? And so I would maybe say freelance Flutter slash mobile developer. Uh, the about section. About looks good some other skills javascript python but my main focus is flutter and dart i love that he put his main focus also what he can do i dig it that's good it's short i read it i didn't get distracted because it wasn't long and then so we we definitely skipped our whole featured section which i would suggest but uh freelance yeah i mean if you're mobile if you're mobile holy cow like you need to have some featured if you've done like a calculator app and flutter that needs to be in featured uh no des descriptions or anything what do we think about that again i need descriptions right i mean if you're freelance to me that means you are getting on you have projects going on but if you have no projects going on i, I don't know what's worse people calling themselves freelance that have no projects or people who have projects and don't portray them Problem. correctly yeah, I'll, I'll quickly explain for me yeah. my four steps to getting a job in tech or to getting clients or whatever it may be. You got to have a badass LinkedIn profile. There's no way around it. You need to have a great portfolio site. You need to have great portfolio items. And you have to have the resume, obviously. But uh, the portfolio site needs to be attractive to non-technical people. Correct. Because majority of hiring managers know nothing about development. They're not looking at the code, but if it can be pleasing to the eye, now they're like, oh, this is someone, this looks decent. I should give them a call. Your portfolio items need to be very tech heavy because those are what the managers are looking at to see your level in the code. So now they're like going through the code base, they're checking out your GitHub. But in order to get to that stage, you need to impress the person that knows nothing about tech. And to do that, to get them to get to your portfolio site, you got to get them on LinkedIn and show them what you can do. It's so you so, see the steps. Yeah, and then we talk about marketing and top of the funnel versus bottom of the funnel and trying to get people through. And that's a whole other conversation. But Danny, Danny just spit some truth, so I'm well, I agree with him is, on that. Can you answer the first question asked? What is the first question? I don't know what's the first question. Uh, first question: Get a better picture. No, uh, they asked in the chat. Can you answer? The first question asked. What is the first question asked? Uh, I don't know. The first question asked. I think we. I think we hit up the. I think the first thing was headshot. What about it? I think. I think uh, at least. That, at least that's how I'm referring to it. All right. So uh, we've got this one right here. Sweet. Uh, Five uh, out of ten. Let's let's get some again. Mobile yeah. UI UX. If you're front end facing, consumer facing, I I need to have some portfolio work in there. All right. So we've got Aksha Jane. Uh, he's from India, software engineer intern at whatever, student developer at whatever, and full stack developer. Yeah, so again, no keywords here, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Like if I'm looking at this, I, I don't know what language you specialize in or want to specialize in. But gr great headshot though. Good headshot. What do we think about this background? Uh, I mean, it is what it is. It It's just a lot, but it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. The whole header thing is just kind of math for me in general. But 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 I think I think if you're gonna do a header, I think to really bump your profiles, do do what Danny did, right? Like have all the ways to to connect with you in in that header. I think that's yeah. big. Yeah, you, you don't have to do that, but I would say for me, the only thing I'll say, this is so messy here that I'm not noticing this. I would I would change the image personally, but I mean you do whatever you want. Uh, different strokes with different folks. All right. We've got the about section. What do we think? Again, I still don't. I still don't see any specific tech. Right, I have a strong development skills in JavaScript and related full stack development. I, that that doesn't mean anything to me. There's full stack development in a ton of different languages. Right, give me specifics. Um, so, you know, again, but make it short. Right, as you yeah. know, currently in college, targeting JavaScript opportunities currently working on a school project all right and so we have our feature section here we go we here we go his resume and then his I'll github 
GitHub's great. Love the GitHub. If you have any side projects, put them put them here. But this is good. I think what this is one of the few profiles aside from yours that have leveraged the featured yeah. section the way it should be. So props. Now, here's one thing I will say. I like the way your featured section looks. One thing I would change, I and this could be just me, but I think there are a million places you could put your resume on your profile. I wouldn't put it in this section. Instead, I would show something that you've done that will get views. Like, did you make a website? Did you make right. a portfolio? Whatever it may be, I would put that there instead, and I'd put your resume right on like here. And, of course, you have nothing explaining your current position. So I would – what do you think about the experience? Yeah, I mean, listen, if, if you're an intern, if you're doing any intern work, any free work, you need to write as like I breathed 17 times in an hour while coding React. Like it needs to get so granular because it is your one position to get you in the door somewhere else. I would be just OCD when it comes to documenting everything you've done in your internship. So he asks... What do you, what do the guys with little to no projects show make their LinkedIn profile stand out? Like mine, I'm a freelancer with unfinished projects, but we will finish in a few months. Dude, and I think really right now profile. with the platforms like Twitch, like I think you're streaming on StreamYard that we're streaming on. Like I think if I were you, I would live record yourself working on your projects and posting them because Again, I'm not a developer, but recruiting engineers for the last six, seven years, I know hiring managers want to know how you came about a problem and solved it more than anything else. And so if you can, there is no, right now, everyone's sitting at home, everyone's got Zoom, everyone's got video, document yourself out loud, right? Talk through how you are coding things and put it up on your LinkedIn. I also, I'm just skimming through because I, I don't want us to kill too much time. Yeah, so yeah, your volunteer good. experience, I love it. Uh, you did this perfectly. Uh, definitely keep up with that. Skills endorsements, la da 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 Your courses, I would, your projects is great. Yeah. Uh, and your interest. So overall, what are we rating this profile here? I mean, I would, I, I, I would say, I would say it's a six out of 10. Like, I, I think this gets yeah. you in the door. I think your profile gets you in the door for sure, but I definitely need some more information. All right. We got... Uh, Kekali, and he's from Connecticut. Nice. First off, love the header. It's really pretty. Love that. So do I, actually. That was the first thing I said. Yeah, really cool. Great headshot, too, man. Smile and look happy. I want to be your friend. <laughs> that Yeah, perfect. Uh, we're looking at the about section. Um, Recent yeah, I dig it. You know, all I see is embedded, um, but, you know, you know, your your full stack, right? What is full again? What is full stack? Get descriptive for me. Yeah, I would have the the keywords like, what do you know? What are you working on? Yep. Uh, so we've jumped straight into the experience. So I'm guessing by the lack of activity as well, you've never made a post. So I would kind of uh, look at that. All right. So experience. What yeah. So here. Um, again, I want to know since this isn't so assembly tech, if it's not specifically development, I want to know stuff that I can understand, right? I don't know what, like, as I say, routing sheets, I feel like I'm in an eye doctor appointment because I need to put my glasses on, but like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what those are. I don't know what, you know, what does continuous improvement look for the company? Like get write your profile the way that you would describe it to your parents. I, I I don't know how else to say it better, but like if the way, cause recruiters aren't like, we're not technical, right? If you can write your profile, like, Hey, I help assembly technicians. They work on the carpet that are installed in churches. And what I do is I go in and I help them increase sending out 15 loads of trucks of carpet to churches a week to 25 loads of truck of trucks of carpets per week, right? Like for me, that's so much easier to understand than apply information from blueprints, routing sheets, MIL specs, and verbal instructions to complete assemblies. What does that mean? I have no idea what that means. I agree. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. And so he was an office assistant at the university, which is awesome. He was an intern, which is awesome. Uh, I have a question for you. Do you think it is important for someone to list every job that they've ever had? Or do you think like they should 
um, they can limit certain positions if it has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, I think I think limit. I think especially for junior folks and then getting yeah. out of college, I think you need. I, I I think you need obviously your internships, and I think you need because I want to see if you're involved in college or not. Um, but I went like go back to like you know your senior year in high school. Right. All right. And we got the uh, education, university. Then we got the skills and endorsements. Uh, you know, for me, if, if if you're if you're coming out of college, I would and, and you're and and get a technical degree, I would put that in your header on your LinkedIn, like like BS degree in engineering. All right, and then we have our interest. So uh, I I need a reference items. from this guy on his on his internship. Definitely get a reference yeah. or two from your internship. Um, but I this this profile gets in the door. Six out of ten. Yeah, and I would say definitely post a couple things like of, of things that you've accomplished, so you can have your activity feed, but also your featured section because you've never made a post as of yet, so you're not showing up on anything. Yep. I, I would fix that. Yeah. And our very last profile that we're doing, uh, this is Karen Oza. What are we thinking so far? He's from India. Uh, you know, I'm fine with the header. It's fine. I mean, you know, I would I would maybe put your email up there so I can reach out to you quickly. Um, you know, profile, maybe give me a smile. Right. Um, but I dig it professional looking. I can see your face, which is good. Um, front end developer again, what type of front end, right? Are we more design, are we more development? If we're development, are we, you know, what languages? All right. People just are missing out too much on the title. <laughs> I, I think that's yeah. the most underrated thing that no one talks about. I, and the thing for me is, and I think maybe it's because I've had the insight where I got to mess with some tools that Vaco has. So like uh, searching for people, I realized if you've got your language here, that's the first thing that they're popping up on that dice app and things like that. So, well, I'm actually speaking at Coda Palooza next month um, and uh, virtually. And literally all I'm doing one session is I'm breaking down the back end of what recruiters see so people can make their profiles look good. All right. So this is the about section. What do you think about this? Okay. So there we go. Angular. So you're targeting Angular. You should have put that in the title. Um, honestly, don't mind this. Um, I know exactly what it is. How do you feel is. about emojis? I don't mind it. It's different. I mean, not many people yeah. use it. I mean, I'm fine. I mean, literally. So if I didn't, it, it, I don't know uh, Karen from anybody else. And for me, I know exactly what he's looking for by this. Angular, TypeScript, Bootstrap, CSS, HTML, and responsive websites i got it that makes sense i get what he does so perfect all right and then we have our featured section youngest member uh of a newsletter team that's pretty cool uh, that's pretty cool good accomplishment and he's got his resume there personally i would put that resume somewhere else but otherwise this looks great yep all right we're at experience so this is an internship uh eight month internship and List out works with recipe API and all that good stuff. That's cool. Uh, that's the only job he's ever had. What do you think? Um, yeah, it looks good. Um, you know, again, I again, the big thing is, is I want to know more about, um, you know, what you've done at a high yeah. level, right? So, like, what is like what projects are you working on in layman's terms and what tools you're using in those projects? Um, but aside from that, I like it. It's not bad. I, I know the tech you're using. I just want more of like the non-technical stuff, like actual achievements, mom yeah, marker, yeah, like yeah, something. Mom yeah, like you've that. done something. If you were there for eight months, you did something. Correct. What was it? Correct. It wasn't just working in REST API. Like you built something, you achieved something. There's something quantitative that you did in yep. order to receive a paycheck. What the hell was it? That's yep. what you need to put right there. And we got your education. Uh, and he and see you did that here. Like you volunteered, you managed promotions. Like you need to use this to be in the style. section too. Yeah, like this is the kind of thing that we're looking for. You need to put that same idea with this yep. in your about section. I like it. So this is great. Uh, skills endorsements, Angular web developer, JavaScript. Here, I'll give you one. There you go. Boom. Danny, there, there you go. Look at that. All right. What and a guy. Got, what uh, a guy. Projects going on, and we've got the interest. 
I so I mean, I, I'd not, say six. six I know and half, this seven. just got him a job. This is yeah, I mean, six job, and a half, but. seven out of ten. I mean, I, I think your pro portfolio gave a little more achievables. I think you can get a recommendation. You know, if you're doing web design stuff or you know, um, you know, responsive website that needs to go on your featured any projects or whatnot. So yeah, again, six and a half, seven. This is probably one of the better better profiles that that, that I've looked at. Yeah, I, I I agree. This is definitely a very good profile. Uh, just a couple things to work on, but otherwise. This is great, and I don't see uh, this stopping you from getting a job. I did just some tweaks here and there will have you exactly where you need to be. All right, I love it. All right, so I thank everyone for being here with us. Yeah, se fun. several of you have been here for the whole hour and twenty. Remember at the beginning of this call where I said, "Oh, it's crazy, you know. man!" I was just gonna hang on here for like twenty minutes, and we were gonna go part ways. But yeah. as soon as we started yeah. chit chat, I knew that wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, no, I genuinely enjoyed this conversation, Taylor, and. Uh, I think we hit on everything that we needed to hit on. Great. Um, I I actually don't mind if we do this again. I think there's think a lot more that we could cover, and especially if because uh, I've got several resumes, but it has personal information. I want to take that out, Definitely. but then we can go over some resumes and things I like think that. It's huge. I think it's huge. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you all for being here with us. Please, please, please check out Taylor on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, eHarmony, and anywhere else. That we can get you follow Taylor. He's got his podcast. He's got his YouTube channel. Check him out. Um, I'm definitely going to have him on again for sure. Uh, I, and I'm probably going to get him on an episode of my podcast as well. We Let's need to get it. that on there. Yeah, so um, if you need any of us, please check us out. Thank you for being here with us and reach out to us on Twitter. Yep. Thanks, thank Danny. you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ending the broadcast.